Hello guys, welcome to this week's uh, TFF preview show. You're going to have to excuse me a little bit because I'm wrecked. But anyway, moving on. Um, Division 4 this week, I'm concentrating on a game between Bradford and Crew Alexandra. Bradford are second in the league, Crew are fourth, and Bradford are currently unbeaten after their relegation last year. They've had a very good start to this season. Um... Formation wise, generally they've been playing a four three three form or four two three one formation, but it's a, a default formation, and um, um, I don't know. A lot of managers sometimes choose to do a default formation, but um, it's not for me. I I, I don't like it. I, I don't know why, but um, it's worked for Bradford anyway. For Crew, they've been using a three five two formation. The last game they uh, beat Swindon Town two 0 at home. As for Bradford, they won one 0 at Rochdale in their last game, and um, they've got some good young players. To be fair to them, they have uh, Sing Graven from Ajax. They have Gherkins, I think his name is from uh, Genk, and Augustine as well. So they have some good young players. Their uh, crew have more. They have some young players, but they're sli slightly higher rated overall. Um, it's a difficult one to call this. Um, I have a sneaky feeling Crew might get the win here, so I'm going to go for Bradford. Nil, Crew won in this one. Uh, on to Division 3, and I've kind of taken a, a top v bottom kind of fixture here. Um, I, If I can help, I don't want to be uh, focusing on the same teams every week, so um, we've gone for Millwall and Cardiff here. Millwall currently third in the league, they've had a good start. Cardiff, 19th. Um, you know, Millwall play 4-3-3 formation. Again, it's a default formation. Um, they have some good players, mainly high-rated older players, but they have Jackson Martinez in there. They drew 2-2 in their last game against Chesterfield, and that's a good result away from home, and they'll be looking to win this game at home. Cardiff are 19, as I said. They do have some talented players. They have Sheik from Roma, uh, a young player who looks like a talent. Uh, in fairness to Cardiff, in the last game they were beaten 1-0 at home to a good Bolton team, a Bolton team who I think will definitely get a playoff place. Uh, <clears throat> that's M&S, uh, coffee by the way, or tea by the way, Paul, if you're watching. Um, and Cardiff, they play 4-2-3-1 formation. Again, it's it's the A actually, so that's the wider formation. Um, again, it's the fault, but... Um, to be honest, Cardiff needs to sort their shit out. I mean, they're 19th in the league. They're, they're a fairly big club. In real life, they've just been promoted to the Premiership. In TFF, they start off in Division 2. They struggled last year in Division 3. They're near the bottom of Division 3 again at the moment. And if they don't sort out their shit, they're heading for Division 4. Um, it's ridiculous, really. A team like Cardiff and the potential there. And decent stadium as well. In good hands, I think they could do very well. But... Um, I don't know, someone needs to be more active there. I think that's the issue. Um, you can't see past a Millwall win here. I think Millwall win this comfortably, actually. I'm going to go for Millwall 3, Cardiff 1. Uh, moving on to Division 2, and we have Hull and Birmingham. Again, this is another top v bottom type fixture. Um, to be fair to Birmingham City, they're also 19th like Cardiff, but Birmingham done well last season and punched above their weight. And early on this season, maybe they're they're fine. They're obviously finding it very difficult. But you know, when you do very well with a team that maybe shouldn't do very well, this can happen as well. Um, there's a long way to go, and a couple of wins, as I found it with Blackburn, can put you up nearly mid table in this division. Um, but it's very difficult to see Birmingham getting any points from this game. Hull are flying 4-2-3-1 attacking type formation. They're second in the league, but they're unbeaten. And in their last cup game, for example, they played the reserves, strong reserves now, but they did win 6-1 against Bury, it's no mean feat. They have players like Mark Rice, Mertens and company in their ranks, and that's I'm not sure if Birmingham any tactics in the world uh, can deal with that from Birmingham's point of view. They do have some good players, actually. They have Zaza and Voland and players like that, and Kurt Zuma, so... Um, uh, they were hammered 3 0 at home to Swansea in their last game. In fairness, Swansea are doing very well. Uh, I wouldn't mind that too much. But um, they've been playing a 5 4 1 formation. Uh, 
down both flanks, fast kind of tempo. Um, they will probably need to change up their tactics for that game tomorrow night, but still going to be very difficult to get anything from Hull Kelowna. Um, and they probably are the favourites for the league at this minute in time because Sunderland, the next best squad, are struggling a little bit at the moment. And are they about eight points behind Hull? They're a long way to go, yeah, but if Hull keep up this momentum, which I think they can pretty much till the end of the season, uh, it's very difficult to see them not getting top two. Uh, Hull have to win this one and rather comfortably again. I'm going to go for Hull 3, Birmingham City 1, uh, and Birmingham probably have to wait a little bit longer. Um, for their first win of the season they've only won points so far Division 1 uh, it was hard to ignore this uh, massive game between Arsenal and Manchester United it's ma- massive because we're 5 games in to the season and Chelsea have uh, 15 points um, so Arsenal are in I think they're seventh in the league, Manchester United eleven. Stephen has only come in at Manchester United. Um but this is a massive match because if, if Chelsea were to win again and um, one of these teams were to drop points, if not both, it's a big, big gap to be fair. Um, even early on. Um of course last season was shown that big gaps could be um could be cut up on it, basically, but Maybe the difference is that Chelsea are the champions and they have um, they did very well last season. They're very consistent. They've carried that on. It's hard to see them having a massive dip. Every team can have a dip. But if they were, say, 12, 15 points ahead later on in the season, it'd be very, very difficult um, to see them being caught, to be honest. Like, I, I couldn't see them going two wins and ten scenario. Um, this particular game, Arsenal have a better side, better squad. The Messi, Neymar, Cruz, De Bruyne, just to name a few. Um, Manchester United, obviously, Busquets, De Gea, Verratti and players of that. They're very good at the squad as well, to be fair. Um, both played 4 3 3 in their last league games. Uh, Tacking formations. Um, I have a feeling something might be changed there, maybe particularly at Manchester United. Um, Arsenal have been in good form. They did draw one all the way to Everton um, in their last league game, but Everton have been doing very well. Um, this is a big game for both teams to try and get a win in. And um, I have a sneaky suspicion that Manchester United are going to pinch this one, maybe uh, 2-1. Um, and hopefully they'll be hoping to move up the table and look for a top four uh, place. Um, at the moment in Division 1, it looks like it'd be very difficult to, to catch Chelsea. You never know what could happen. But, um, you know, teams like Liverpool are struggling a little bit at the moment as well. So, it's um, it's it's in Man City as well. They've been up and down. So, it's a difficult one. Um, but that's about it uh, this week, guys. Um, it's a bit later than usual, but I've been fairly busy. So, um, hopefully it'll be earlier. Uh, next week and best of luck to everyone with their games this Thursday Uh, that's it pretty much thank you very much see you later